I think it's safe to say that the concept of community has changed dramatically over time. When I was young, it generally referred to my hometown. I was encouraged to be community-minded, to take care of my community, to find ways to do community service. It was pretty well limited in a geographical sense by the town limits. As I got older, the sense of community expanded to include the new associations in my life, my university community, my work community, my recreation community, and so on. Still, community was significantly limited by its physical location. But those limitations were blown apart by a life-changing journey to Africa in 1986. I took on a teaching position in a rural area of Botswana, and suddenly community meant something else. It was more about relationships, more about emotional bonds than geography. That community forged on the dusty savanna of Botswana continued after I returned to Canada. Fast forward to today, and we've added the word virtual to our definition of community. Technology has greatly changed our sense of community for good or bad. We can now interact with others from distant lands, with people we've never even met in person. We can connect to other cultures and perspectives and ideas. We can become aware of the joys and struggles of people living thousands of kilometers away. Indeed, we benefited from our exposure to the broader world. But we've also seen the negative side of social media. Friendship without true intimacy, a public persona in place of a real person, and the rapid diffusion of disinformation, fake news, conspiracy theories, and free speech without accountability. Jesus himself made it clear that community was an affair of the heart, not limited to geography, culture, or birth. Who is my mother and who are my brothers and sisters? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. St. Paul and his missionary travels expands on this broader sense of community by declaring that there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Through Christ, we are drawn into community not for selfish reasons, not for some political advantage or personal gain, but to deepen our relationship with God and with one another. In the time of COVID, the time of social distancing, we faced hard decisions for the safety and health of our vulnerable members. But our faith and our hearts also told us we can't simply retreat into a protective cocoon, waiting for better days. Yes, we had to be prudent, but we also learned to continue to build community in new ways. I think of my own experience of community when, for health reasons, public religious services were suspended. As we celebrated the Eucharist in our house chapels and empty churches, we Redemptorists were keenly aware that we were still united with the broader church community. Not only were we present, but our families and friends were present. Our associates and parishioners were present. The communion of saints was also present. This awareness should keep us from drawing in on ourselves, isolating ourselves from our brothers and sisters. Here, we can take a lesson from contemplative congregations in the church. At first glance, they seem to be cut off from the world. But true to their charism, they are engaged in an apostolate of prayer 
for the world. Each of us should carry around a little of that spirit in our hearts, a reminder that we are always connected to our brothers and sisters around the world. Time and time again, Jesus reminds us that we're in this together. He lays it out in the great parable of the sheep and the goats. Whatever you do to the least of these, my sisters and brothers, you do to me. Such a universal sense of community can help change our hearts and ultimately change the world. Here, people of faith can make an important contribution. Rather than focus on what divides us, we can and should focus on what unites us, our kinship in the family of God. Even as we struggle with the many challenges in our world, we should remain hopeful and always strive to strengthen the common bond that we share with one another. In his recent encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis speaks of this hope. I invite everyone to renewed hope, for hope speaks to us of something deeply rooted in every human heart, independently of our circumstances and historical conditioning. Hope speaks to us of a thirst, an aspiration, a longing for a life of fulfillment, a desire to achieve great things, things that fill our heart and lift our spirit to lofty realities like truth, goodness and beauty, justice and love. Hope is bold. It can look beyond personal convenience, the petty securities and compensations which limit our horizon, and it can open us up to grand ideals that make life more beautiful and worthwhile. May we be bearers of hope in our world as we continue to build up our community of faith. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.